Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Liberty White. I'm John Warner. I'm Alice Bowers. And I'm Sylvia so I think this topic came up because of the group of us, I'm the newbie. My daughter is like almost 11 months. And I don't know what I like a few weeks ago that I met Alex and was able to have someone else to bounce ideas off of like being a new mom, how to balance your schedule, and because it's conferences directed towards techies and any people in the game, like that's me. So it's it's definitely helps, I feel like, to share our experiences so that you're still kind of being a parent that sometimes you don't like Oh, hey, what about my career and balancing and bringing both of the worlds together? So, for myself, I'm a digital marketing strategist. I also work at General Assembly. And um, I'll it over to some of these guys are like hardcore techies and just sharing, even like from a parenting standpoint, family life and how that's worked for you. All right, and I'm going to explain. I am an assistant director of Kaiser and Kellogg Solutions, a um, digital architecture and web development. Um, my family dynamic right now is I've got four children, uh, eight, two, uh, twin boys that are four, and baby girls that just turned two, two weeks ago. So uh, it's a lot to juggle, um, but for the most part, uh, yeah, they're, they're right. um, But it, it's cool, um, you know, being able to handle that. I actually finished, um, just from, from an academic standpoint, I finished uh, both of my master's degrees after the children were born. So I was doing that and doing, uh, doing the technology thing at the same time. So it, it's possible to, to juggle that and manage it. So. My name is Alex, I'm a software engineer with Career Builder. Um, I'm a technical lead, so I also mentor a little work. And um, I'm working on my master's degree in computer science, taking advantage of Georgia Tech's new online computer science degree, which is just fantastic to know about work and life. Expect that you are working and you have a full time job elsewhere. <coughs> and then um, I also play soccer. So I'll start off with you, John, just with regards to what did you find being the biggest challenge? So I'm saying, you know, four kids is a lot. So you're in my direction up here. <laughs> Um, well, the first thing is that um, you have to manage your own expectations. Um, for me, the biggest thing was managing my sort of failure threshold. So, you know, I guess it's a thing with the world of technology. I know a lot of people in here probably experimenting. And as soon as it comes out, you want to touch it, you want to grab the SDK, you want to pull, you know, just break it and see what you can do with it. Um, and that was me. That was, I, I would just touch anything I could. I would all the back on all the time. just a little all my money in technology that was going to be proven in the the betas, the, the public releases. Um, but as soon as those kids swooped in, um, it, it, my formula changed. It went from being heavily weighted towards being my bank account and that being the sole, you know, sole source of my happiness and success to being more of a weighted average um, across, you know, I guess, you know, four kids, a.k.a. 14 kids, a.k.a. a million kids. So, um, and then I know what we'll continue to the free tickets on. So, but the bottom line is that you have to, to manage your expectations, you have to become a lot more particular about what you get into. Um, you know, not every technology, not every endeavor is going to is going to have a return. Um, and so, as a parent, um, I've, I've been a lot more particular about what the output is going to be. So, you have no kind of out there latest version, and I say, hey, I want to get back into this. I want to get into it. And I have to formulate, okay, how does this help me and benefit my children as well? Um, I also have to be very tolerant of the fact that they're curious about stuff. Um, they may have no idea what they're doing. But if I can show them a cool picture or show them something that's happening with it, I, I'm almost like the greatest rock star ever um, in their eyes. So they may not know what rock star is or what JPC is or any of that other things, but um, you have to put it in terms they can understand. Um, you also have to be very human with them and not, you know, so mechanical in terms of how you interact with them. They may not know what this, what this stuff is and I'm working on it, but um, as long as Danny's doing something that's cool, um, then I stay in a good grace. So. And then, Alex, I'll just pause this to you with regards to making that decision to go back to school and what, how have you been able to manage that? Regarding, so going back to school was sort of a, a long term goal. Um, when my then boyfriend and I came down to Atlanta, he got into the PhD program at Tech and I got the rejection letter. So I to work. Um, and you know, life happens and stuff, and he took. 
five extra years to finish that PhD, but put off me going back to school for, you know, another year, another year, another year. So finally, keep graduating, getting born, uh, and we'll kind of do anything. So um, when she was, when our daughter was born, she was, um, or I was in the job, and we could find it really good value, um, the 40 hour week, it could value the age of the life outside of birth, it could, you know, get like those other people. So I was actually, um, before I went back to get a master's degree, I was looking at, I was looking at other classes online, I was trying to figure out, you know, what I wanted to be in scale. If technology wasn't going to help support my life. Um, fortunately, I have a good job that reminds me that I really do enjoy technology. I really do love programming. Um, so the, the new program at Georgia Tech was just a really great fit. And it, it's allowed me to fulfill my dream of getting a master's degree in something that I love, but also the balance that, that I have a life that I like. And I think for myself, um, kind of being able to have my own schedule and, and putting, like, okay, the time of time with my daughter, but then also planning is like, I know she has a living, planning is everything. And I think I realized that more so when she, you know, as she's still dependent on me, but that three to six months, like, once she hit that six month mark and she can kind of, so on her own and everything, that was great. So I got her a little computer to like, kind of distract her and then I could be able to then go and spend some time coding. And um, one of the resources that I find great are like, the online programs. So while I'm not necessarily able to go out to different classes, but then I can still show my skills. And uh, what I found also in being a new parent is the opportunities, like not missing those opportunities for Hackathon. So last month, um, Sears um, did a retail Hackathon at ATV, and I kind of challenged myself, like, can I do this and have my little girl with me? And I wrote a lot of posts of like, how it was. Like, she came over the night, and I think I had all these looks of like, she's here with her daughter. So I'm sure some were like, wow, she's a rock star, and others were like, how dare she? You know, she, she was making noise, and the, um, I think it was like the VP product development, and my daughter was like, ah, ah. <laughs> no, no, no. But not to be ashamed of that, because you you have, later on, I think it was the next day, people came up and said, thank you so much, because we don't see women with their kids there. There were a lot of guys that didn't know at all. <laughs> there were guys there with their kids, but of all the women, I think there were probably like, 17 women that came, no, I'm sorry, it was 12 the night before, five actually stayed, and then one with a child. You know, seeing those kind of visually, that helps it become more a part of the culture, like family is, it's okay. It's okay to have a family here. And I have two others who shared with me a half of story as well. So, we've a few jobs, we've got a quarter of the half and, you know, my first, my first half of no, it's not the first one. The first one that I worked in a very small project and one done there a week and I didn't know what was going on. So the first the first pack one that I really got to participate in, um, I kind of had so much fail. Like, I was doing so great with the work that they were doing and I was saying and saying and saying and all of a sudden it's like 2 a.m. You know? And I missed my time, I missed that time, I missed everything. She was asleep. I was way too tired to at home. I couldn't. Like, I just totally put the hack on in front of what was more to me as a, as a you know, as mom. So, um, the next hack on, I worked with a team and um, just at 7 o'clock, I said, I have to come home. It's time, you know, I let them know earlier in the day, like, at 7 o'clock, I have to leave. You know, that's when I got time. I was just going to report to me. It's over once I get home and it's over. But it really helped our team focus and just. We could focus on our in our MVP because it had minimum model product, like most of the work was before I left. And we had polishing and all those other like, little nice things that we could put together. And that worked out really, really well. Remembering what's important to me and also remembering, you know, that it really helps focus as a team. And that it's up to an act on it's like done. And those are the ones that I won. I put my family as part of the act on and my experience. 
Now, um, the next question I have you guys is just how are you able to, um, how do you buy your time in the skill development? Um, well, for me, it's, it's really, it's just a mixture of things. Um, so, uh, sometimes I, well, let's talk about the dog first. So, we need to go with, you know, time-based learning and, and picking and choosing what you want to learn. Or you can sort of go goal-oriented. So, for me, um, you know, I'm, I'm working a little bit more with, uh, with Swift and whatnot. Um, you know, there's there's a time where you may want to actually accomplish a goal. You may want to build an app or you may want to spike a clean. Controls or views and things like that. Please read me by that one example. Um, but the bottom line is that you have to set those expectations up front so that you won't violate them um, when it comes to the contracts that you establish with your family. Um, so, you know, I know that, you know, as a man of the house, I have obligations, I have responsibilities, and there's expectations of me. Um, but when it comes to the development, I have to make sure that, you know, the curiosity basically is the evil in all of this. I don't want to keep going all night, I don't want to crank, crank it out, I don't want to, you know, Right, we'll see what it is that do stuff that have no meaning or purpose around anyone else. But the bottom line is that it's all said and done. I've got to my guard in at night or in the back of my mind. I think she might turn into an evil super villain who blames me for things all wrong in her life because I was doing no sequel instead of tipping on her. Um, so the bottom line is that you just have to sort of subdivide that time up and set those expectations. Um, as a percentage, I mean, it used to be. Um, probably about 50% of the time that I'm home, it would be spent doing development. But it's just contracted quite a bit down to 20, 25%. And it's actually good um, because I like to plug it. Um, because I know I'm plugging too. My computer doesn't love me, my code doesn't love me. The people I write code for pay me, but three months later, they look like I didn't even do anything. <laughs> so, um, you know, you have to keep the value system intact, intact understand what the value is going to be on the, out, on the output side, and then just, you know, keep it in perspective. You know, when it's all said and done, it's, it's just code, it's just technology, there's no reciprocation uh, that's going to come out of that, so. I, I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> 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 and uh, we're going to kind of shift now to the industry and what we see and or hear as it relates to how we fix. And one of the things that, just with some of the people that I, I've spoken to, is the importance of talking to like your managers and your supervisors. You know what I think is your supervisors, what kind of um, negotiations you possibly have as it relates to making sure that you still fulfill what you needed to do work wise, but then also being able to make time for your family and how, what, what was the reaction like? Um, so I, I've had the experience working at a, you know, a corporate, you know, your life to support the work place, and then now with a, your work, your, yeah, your work to support your life. Yeah. So, so the, the first place, place, it was very much a, um, you know, you need to be here from 9 to 5, I know you're coding, you can do that from anywhere, you need to be here from 9 to 5, I don't care. You know, you need to be able to work extra. But, you know, 70 hours a week and I was able to turn in it. I was kind of done with that job. Um, it would have been really nice if I was able to talk to the manager about, you know, balancing things out better. Well, what what would work so that I, you know, I'm just going to get the work done, but, you know, getting to the right eye and looking at the traffic is not always feasible. Um, you know, you know, it was a very flexible arrangement. Um, and so, like, better manager training on like how you can work with someone who gets to have an unpredictable schedule. So, I can't really predict whether my kids are going to go out in the morning. Like, I need some flexibility there. I need some flexibility if I, you know, if everybody else sleeps or if I was up all night. I need some flexibility. Um, just being able to be able to have that conversation. Um, fortunately, I work now that they really realize. Talk to the manager about that. This is how. This is what will work for me. Um, 
just jump in into being the total opposite of what you said. Like, for myself, during my pregnancy, I hate a lot of people look into the stuff on my Facebook and they're like, you're pregnant? Because of that stigma of that I wouldn't be able to do work or that they had to ease up on me so much or, you know, missing opportunities. So, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't do that again. I would probably be a lot more upfront and not try to do everything because ultimately, thankfully, pregnancy-wise, like, everything went well, but that was a lot of unnecessary stress that I didn't have on myself. So definitely, I would just share that for anyone in this future down the line, like, don't worry about those, those statements. Like, life goes on. There'll be other projects, there'll be other opportunities. And also, um, so, so I'm speaking of stigma. So I remember that at first, um, I was on a planning meeting, um, Doug and I were in our room, um, where we were talking about something cool. And of course, the, the manager uh, was going around sort of setting signs and talking about tasks and everything. And so he gets to me, he's like, oh, well, you know, John, you know, we just had, had some little plans, and so we will let y'all go. So, you know, I didn't appreciate it. Um, first off, you know, in my house, I'm in, I'm in command, right? So I don't need a manager who doesn't know my situation deciding in front of a room full of people about my availability for work that I signed up for. So, take it aside, because you, you know, you don't have a competition about it, ever. Um, but you pull it aside and you sit and you draw the purpose, put it in a check, and you say, look, you know, I tell you when I'm away, right? You don't allow people to, to use your children and your family as a weapon to, to limit it where you are in your career, because they will try, especially if they got in the gym. But the bottom line is that you got to say, look, I tell you when I'm off, not the other way around. Um, second, um, you have to be very upfront with, you know, we talk about flexibility a lot. So one of the things that I, I really hate um, about sitting is also from the other end, right? So as a father, it's very rare for the father to show up for the midday ice cream parties that the kids have in, in daycare. So when I show up, everybody starts looking around like, what is this? And I'm, I'm already, I'm feeling uncomfortable because I'm the only guy in the room and the room is full of moms, right? So, but I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to just up and leave for no reason and just go and participate because the stigma is that fathers don't need work to go see what their kids are doing. But I want to be there because I want to know my teacher's names. I want to know their full names. I want to know what kind of history. I want to, say, I want to know what's going on. And so, you know, but yes, I want to know the flavor because I want some. But, but the bottom line is that there, there are stigmas, you know, that I don't think we'll ever get to a realm where there won't be a stigma of any kind. It could be gender, it could be racial, it could be, you know, uh, parental or not. Um, but the bottom line is that when you see it, when you recognize it, you have to, you, you, it's, up, it's your responsibility to yourself to at least confront it. You may not, you may not succeed. But when you say it and you let it happen, it basically, for all these purposes, gives them ammunition to keep doing it over and over again. The next thing you know, you'll be the person who, well, everybody else is working 80 hours, you're working 40, because they made the decision for you. And that's not the best way to, to proceed. And there are probably new opportunities that you would otherwise, you, you may want, but they are taken away from you. So it's just a lot of work, basically. So, so in like 15 seconds each, <laughs> so resources or some tips for people just thinking about it, or you know, that's the road that they're going down, that will both help them, you know, add, to continue to develop their career as well. Oh, man. I can start. So, um, <laughs> there's what's called the mom shift, and while that's not only, and it's by Reva, R-E-V-A uh, Smith, it's not just um, technology-based, it's just careers overall, but that helps me because when we talk about like remote working, flex much like yourself, the way you plan things out, and that kind of just helped me prepare. Like these are the options that I have, and to know so that I can go and negotiate. So I think negotiating, knowing that you have a voice, is really, really important. I'm going to have two two resources. So the first one is on a website called Common Sense Media uh, Work. Um, it's a website that has lots of information on movies, TV, video games, things that your children or future children will be into, but it says there's no way for you to basically check everything. They can do research for you and tell you what's appropriate, what's not pros and cons. Um, it talks about privacy, child advocacy, everything you possibly want. And if you don't have children, I would advise you to go check it out. Second resource is um, Imperia Premium Vodka. Uh, that will help you pay those fees. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, uh, um, so, uh, because you know, it, 
there will come times where you'll get frustrated and you'll shake your fist and, and um, you know, but it happens. I'm, I'm totally serious. The bottom line is find, find an outlet. It can be cold, it can be gay. I don't even say you anything illegal with the dream, but just it helps the degrees to keep yourself. I think the thing that helped me the most, just telling me, you know, advance my career was just taking care of myself and talking to other people. Talking to other women, talking to other moms, just taking care of myself um, and finding, you know, just realizing that my physical health and mental health are going to be the best way I can help myself and my kids and do any kind of advancing of my career at all. Thanks. Any questions? No, we want it for the transcription. I'm sorry. Um, I'm really curious uh, as to your advice and if you are in a situation where you're in a interview and do you have, hey, I'm going to have to speak to this and it's flexibility. Do you say, oh, I need flexibility because that's just something I need? I mean, how do you approach that subject? How much sharing do you do? I just would like to ask about flexibility in general. Um, I go interviewing and interviewing other people and being an interviewee. Um, I don't like, I just don't want to know what the flexibility is. You know, it could be for any reason. Like, I get stuck on the side of the road. I get kicked on in the morning. But whatever the situation is, there are many reasons that I want a flexibility before it is. Um, so just stressing that because of the value of my company, but also asking about it. Um, and I know for myself when I did some interviewing that I asked about the what the work like balance is like. Just the time that you need that broad question because we can't ask you too much detail about your family. Um, I think there's some of those little points. So just asking that and I think that kind of speaks to the things that I'm being at home is more for me as well. Okay. And we're done.